we're going to learn about how we can use Kafka and InfluxDB Cloud v3 to generate data and subscribe to a topic and write that data to InfluxDB using Kafka. So this course is brought to you by InfluxDB University and InfluxDB University offers free and live train uh, self-paced training on a variety of different topics including InfluxDB v3, client libraries, data science tools, uh, stream processing tools, business intelligence tools, and so much more. But today we're going to talk about what is Kafka, then we're going to introduce Telegraph, and we're going to talk about the requirements uh, so that you can run this demo yourself, and uh, how we use Kafka and Telegraph to actually write data to InfluxDB v3. And then last but not least, we'll uh, go over some resources and some help, and finally we'll actually uh, perform the demo. So what is Kafka? Well, a Kafka is a stream, Kafka is a stream processing platform. Um, it's a, an Apache product and it's also open source and it's designed to build real time streaming data pipelines and applications. It has a distributed architecture, which means that it operates in a distributed manner, which ensures high availability and fault tolerance by distributing data across multiple servers. It operates through PubSub messaging, uh, so it uses a, a publish subscribe model to handle real data feeds, and that allows for scalable and durable message storage. It's also used for real-time analytics. Um, it's used for monitoring and providing fast access to large data sets in real time. What is Telegraph? Well, Telegraph is a collection agent for metrics and events. It is also a product that is developed by Influx Data, and it's fully open source as well. It's written in Go, and it's downloadable as a single binary and requires no external dependencies. It has a very minimal memory footprint, and it's optimized for writing to data to InfluxDB, but you can also use it to write data to a variety of other data stores as well. It's also optimized for writing streaming data. And you get all sorts of benefits when you use Telegraph. The first is that it's configurable through a single TOML configuration file, uh, which is a very low code solution. And another one is that you take advantage of all of the capabilities that the agent itself has to offer. Um, things like uh, uh, caching and buffering so that if your uh, data destination um, comes offline for whatever reason, you can still store those points and when it becomes available again, you won't have had any data loss. Uh, it's also plugin driven. There are um, all sorts of input, output, aggregator, and processor plugins that you can choose from that you can use and configure in your configuration file to gather data from a wide variety of different places and send it to a variety of data stores as well. And so what is InfluxDB? Well, InfluxDB is a time series database, and here's the InfluxDB uh, or Influx Data reference architecture. So the idea with InfluxDB is that if you have data from a wide variety of different tools um, and sources, whether or not that data are time series metrics, whether or not that data is coming from sensors, or it's maybe particular events and coming from different devices as well, you can collect that data through a variety of different tools, Telegraph included, but there are also client libraries, um, API, uh, and today we're also going to show how we are collecting our data with Kafka. And then within InfluxDB, we can perform SQL queries or InfluxQL queries. InfluxQL is a SQL-like query language that is specifically um, written to handle time series data. Uh, so we can use SQL or InfluxQL to query InfluxDB itself and uh, visualize our data and understand what's going on with it. And then we can also really easily send that data to a variety of other tools, such as things like Grafana, Superset, Power BI, Tableau, um, et cetera, so that we can further analyze our data and derive meaning from it. So now let's understand Kafka and InfluxDB and Telegraph a little bit better by comparing them. So what is Kafka versus InfluxDB? Well, InfluxDB is really a time series database. It's where you're actually going to be storing your data, and it's really designed for very fast read and write performance of that timestamp data. On the other hand, Kafka is a streaming, distributed streaming platform uh, that hand, handles messages. So the data model is quite different. Also, the use cases. 
Kafka is really being used to build real-time data pipelines and, and also handle stream processing and real-time analytics. And InfluxDB is optimized for monitoring, uh, event data storage, um, and real-time analytics specifically on time series data. Um, so you'd usually use Kafka in conjunction with InfluxDB so that you can manage your pipeline, maybe do some processing around your data so that it's cleaner when it um, actually arrives in InfluxDB. And then once you have all of your data from a variety of different sources um, that you've accumulated and gathered with Kafka, then you can actually go ahead and perform more complex analysis on all of your aggregated data that you store in InfluxDB for a long time. Also, data and durability and scalability is another place where Kafka and InfluxDB differ. So uh, Kafka distributes data across a cluster of servers for high availability and fault tolerance. InfluxDB also does provide clustering um, and high availability for certain offerings, but not for all. So it depends uh, what version of InfluxDB you're using. Um, and then query language. Kafka does not have a native query language. It is often consumed by stream processing frameworks like Kafka Streams or maybe Apache Flink. Um, whereas InfluxDB uses its query language, uh, InfluxQL or SQL, to interact with data. Now let's talk about the difference between Kafka and Telegraph because um, they're a little bit more related. So let's talk about the difference between their core functionality. So Telegraph is a lightweight collection agent that's used to collect and report uh, metrics and events, and they usually feed into InfluxDB. Um, although you can also feed it into other data stores. Kafka, on the other hand, is used for building real-time data pipelines and streaming applications. Um, and then data flow. Kafka generally acts as a broker uh, for streaming data between producers and consumers, which enables a lot of this processing and analysis, while Telegraph is primarily focused on gathering metrics from a variety of different sources and then sending them to configured output. Um, Configuration. Kafka is often configured through a broker-based setup that can usually involve Zookeeper. We'll be using Zookeeper today. Uh, Telegraph, however, is typically easier to set up and easier to configure, and you do that through a single uh, low-code configuration file. So Kafka is really used for a broad set of real-time analytics use cases, including things to, um, you know, activity tracking, aggregating data from different sources, or acting as a buffer to handle bursts of data. Um, whereas Telegraph is commonly used for collecting performance metrics, um, IoT data, um, data from other databases or other systems, or maybe applications, and then sending them to InfluxDB. So let's talk about some of our requirements. So you're going to need Docker to run this demo. You're going to need an InfluxDB Cloud 3.0 account. Um, and once you create one, you'll want to also create a database name or a database, and that's also referred to as a bucket, the same thing, and also create an authentication token, um, and also gather your org ID. So we'll talk about how to do that just now. So uh, if we go to the UI of InfluxDB, we go to InfluxDB Cloud, and we click on buckets there from that uh, navigation manual, we can then click Create Bucket, give our bucket a name. This is where we're going to be writing a data. This is also referred to as a database, it's the same thing. We can create it, we've created one, and we're good to go. And then um, API tokens, uh, we can generate one pretty similarly. We'll want to name it, and then go ahead and copy it, uh, because we'll need that as well. And then our org ID um, can simply be found in the URL of your cloud account. Um, that's probably the, the easiest way to find it. So now let's talk about um, installation. So this demo just requires Docker. So to get started with Docker, visit docker.com slash get started and select your OS and install Docker Desktop according to the instructions uh, from the URL above. So for this particular demo, we're going to be monitoring a garden. And this demo generates random data from a garden, which includes humidity, temperature, wind, and soil data. So let's take a over, quick overview of the repo. So in it, um, there is a directory called app, and within that there is a Python script called garden underscore sensor underscore gateway dot pi. And it's a Python script that uses the Kafka producer class from the Kafka passage package to send generated garden data 
uh, to a Kafka topic. It includes uh, random humidity, temperature, wind, and soil data. And then our Docker file uh, will create a container that runs uh, this garden sensor gateway.py. And we have another directory called resources, and under that we have our Docker Compose, and that contains all the containers that include Kafka, Zookeeper, Telegraph, and uh, Garden Sensor Gateway. And we also have our Telegraph config labeled my Telegraph config under resources as well. And that contains the actual Telegraph configuration that we um, want to subscribe to the Kafka topic that we've created and write that garden data that's being um, pushed to that topic to InfluxDB Cloud. So let's talk a little bit more about the garden sensor gateway.py. So um, the first kind of step that happens there is there's um, some code that specifies the data generation. And specifically, there's some functions like random temp cells, um, Celsius, random humidity, random wind, and random soil that generate those random values. Uh, and these values are rounded to one decimal place. And then um, we have a JSON packaging. So we get the get JSON data function aggregates these random sensor values. Um, and then the Kafka producer um, in the main function is initialized uh, to send messages to a Kafka broker running on Kafka 9092. Um, the producer sends around 20,000 messages to a topic called garden sensor data. And last but not least, we have a message sending loop. Uh, the loop in the main uh, continuously creates the JSON format sensor data with the JSON with the get underscore JSON underscore data, sends it to the Kafka topic and prints a message to the console. The loop pauses for five seconds between iterations as well. And then this is what our telegraph configuration looks like. It's a single toml configuration. The part that we that you're going to have to to edit to run this demo is to make sure to either use environment variables or simply specify your URL, um, where your uh, region of your cloud account is, your token, and your organization, as well as the destination bucket that you want to write all of this garden data to. Um, and then last but not least, you're also going to want to include the inputs for the Kafka itself, the Kafka consumer, and specify what port that's running on, um, and the topic that you want to consume, which is the garden underscore sensor underscore data. Uh, resources and help. So if you have any questions about this uh, lesson today or um, you just want to ask about anything related to time series, Kafka, etc., please, please, please reach out on Slack or community forums. Slack is influxdata.com slash Slack. Community forums is community.influxdata.com. Our docs are fantastic. That's where you can find additional information on how to create a bucket slash database, how to create an authentic authentication token, and where your org ID exists, although that's just in the URL. And then last but not least, again, friendly reminder that you can use InfluxDB University to gain free badges on all sorts of courses related to InfluxDB and showcase your skills there. And please note, we are currently in the process of producing more content around InfluxDB v3 specifically. Um, so there's a little bit of delay with that, but uh, more courses on this version of InfluxDB will be available soon. And last but not least, if you want to run this demo that we're about to go through right now yourself, you can go to github.com slash influx community slash influx db um, hyphen Kafka hyphen demo. Influx community is a GitHub organization that contains all sorts of examples for how to use influx db with a wide variety of other tools, things like superset, things like Quix, which is a platform um, for building uh, stream processing pi pipelines as well, um, and ETL uh, processes as well. Um, another one is Mage. Um, we have all sorts of IoT demos on there. It's also where all the client libraries for InfluxDB v3 are maintained. So yeah, if you want an example for how to do something with InfluxDB that involves a whole stack of technologies, I highly encourage you to check out the Influx community organization. Um, and without that, without uh, much further ado, let's actually go ahead and look at some of the code and, and actually produce a demo here. Um, So yeah, just to kind of go over it again, so we have our um, app directory where we contain our Docker file that basically, uh, let me make this smaller, basically just um, builds that container to go ahead and just run our gateway underscore sensor uh, underscore gateway dot pi. Um, 
script. And this script is what's responsible for inputting the Kafka producer and the Kafka package, creating random values for humidity, wind, soil, and uh, temperature in Celsius. Um, and then also um, pushing that data to the, the topic. Um, and then we have our Docker Compose file, which contains all the information for building our Kafka container, our Zookeeper container, um, as well as our uh, our Python container that runs that um, script that generates our data, and our Telegraph container, so that we can um, take all the data from that Kafka topic and actually write it to InfluxDB. Um, and for that, we just use the command Telegraph the debug flag just so that we can see all the details of um, how the agent is working and then we pass in the config flag along with the actual configuration and we've already kind of talked about um, the config already uh, so I won't go into detail there and then the readme has all the information that we need as well to reference um, and we can just use our docker compose uh, up build command to actually Go ahead and run everything. Oops. And we're going to want to actually CD into resources before uh, we can run our Docker Compose command. And now, please know it's going to take a little bit of a hot second for all the containers to run because um, they are dependent on each other. Uh, we need to make sure, you know, that. Kafka is up and running successfully and that we're actually generating data with the garden sensor uh, underscore gateway.py script um, before we can actually go ahead and start telegraph um, because it won't be able to you know successfully gather data unless we do all of that uh, first So, okay, great. So now we can see that um, Telegraph is actually starting to go ahead and run in these logs. And we can see now that it, in fact, did write a batch of six metrics and then two metrics. So we are successfully writing data to InfluxDB. So this is uh, what InfluxDB Cloud looks like. We can go ahead and navigate to our buckets. We are writing our data to our demo bucket, which contains a bunch of different information. And we will go ahead and select it, and we can use the SQL sync to automatically generate data. And we are writing from Kafka Consumer, and we can see that we have humidity values, soil temperature, etc. No tags. And we can click run. And then we can actually see that we have, in fact, written a bunch of data. Um, and so yeah, that's the full demo. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, and please, if you have any questions, I encourage you to reach out um, on our Slacker forums. I hope you enjoyed this lesson.